Um, for Mr. Rose, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Are we still doing the uh, stipulated 36 to 120 with a six months concurrent? Correct, Your Honor. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Is there anything you'd like to add, Mr. Bowman? No, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, uh, for the court's information, I have one victim speaker. Who is it? It is the uh, victim's mother, Brianna Kamazek. She will let the, um, due to her language barrier, she will be having someone read her statement for her, but she is present with him today. Right. We have no issue with that at all, Your Honor. She'll be committed to the last. Mr. Rice, your attorney will have the opportunity to suggest the court. Is there anything you'd like to say first? Would you prefer to? Well, I, I don't care. Come on up here with me. Thank you, Your Honor. To the parents and family of Ms. Tentor, I sincerely apologize for the pain and suffering my actions the morning of November 2nd, 2021 have caused you, your family, and those who knew and loved Ms. Tina and Max. I also let my family, teammates, and those who believed in me down with my actions. It hurt so many. Over the past 21 months, I've searched way into find the answers to explain my selfish behavior on that day. I have no excuse and pray that accepting responsibility and my guilty plea can allow me to begin the healing process and allow everyone involved to heal also. My actions are not a true reflection of me. I am committed to creating greater, greater awareness and educating others about the dangers that driving at excessive speed and driving impaired can cause. With the support of my family, David, Richard, and friends, I pledge to be the father and man God created me to be. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tezel, Mr. Thank you. May it please the court. All right, there's Henry Ruggs addressing the court, apologizing to the victim's family. Um, let's get a break in here, and then when we come back, we'll listen to the victim family members speaking in front of Henry Ruggs, the man who took the life of Tina Tinter driving drunk in Las Vegas. Back after this. Nobody ever plans to end up in a room like this. Everyday people caught up in a plan to commit murder. Did you kill your mother? Yes, I did. The ultimate betrayals, friends and family turning on each other. Spell was broken when the handcuffs went click. But just who is the puppet? And who's pulling the strings? Accomplice to Murder with Vinnie Politan. Tonight, 7, 6 Central. Only on Court TV. Welcome back. Along with Ted Rollins, I'm Chanley Painter here live in Las Vegas. We're bringing you the sentencing for former NFL player Henry Ruggs. He was actually uh, agreed to plead guilty for causing the fatal crash that killed Tina Tinter and her dog in November 2021. Let's uh, get back into the courtroom and right where we left off. We just heard from Henry Ruggs. Now we're going to hear from Tina Tinter's family. As the court is aware, we made a comprehensive uh, filing of a memorandum in mitigation, and therefore I won't make lengthy remarks, knowing that this honorable court's practice is to thoroughly review the memo and the many letters that were submitted. As the court knows, Henry was on electronic monitoring under house arrest, as well as alcohol monitoring without a single violation for over one and a half years, with no credit towards his prison sentence. I would like to begin by expressing sincere condolences to Ms. Tinter's family and friends for their unimaginable loss. Mr. Schoenfeld and I have responsibilities to the Constitution and the oath we have taken to zealously represent citizens of Nevada, and I've taken that oath to heart in my 41 years as a lawyer. It did not mean we don't feel the pain of someone's loss, and we certainly didn't intend the defense of our client to diminish the memory of a sweet, kind, and loved person. We hope that Henry's truly heartfelt acceptance of responsibility brings some closure to Ms. Tinter's loved ones. I'd like to acknowledge the professionalism of Mr. Bauman throughout the proceedings and his hard work. I'd also like to thank the District Attorney, Mr. Wolfson, and his colleagues for their thoughtful analysis of an extremely difficult case. Also, I would like to thank Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Nakfi, 
and uh, Mr. Albright, who counseled the family so wisely during these very difficult times. In preparing the memo we submitted, and having spent many hours with Henry and the people who know and love him, I know firsthand from day one how truly badly he feels and how pained Henry is for his actions. It's more pronounced because his behavior in drinking that night truly was aberrant. Many times, Your Honor, will notice that in DUI cases, the person accused is either alcoholic or a repeat offender. That wasn't Henry. He was not a drinker. He fought through a very difficult childhood, taking care of his younger brother, and he strived to accomplish his best in school and athletics and to achieve a dream of playing professionally. All of that work disrupted as a result of drinking and driving at an excessive speed. What Henry fully accepts is that his decision caused Ms. Tinter's death. He's a kind, shy, extremely bright and thoughtful young man who I truly wish I had met under different circumstances. Make no mistake, he takes responsibility for this tragedy and is deeply saddened for Ms. Tinter's loved ones and truly remorseful and hopeful that, like his deeply held Christian faith teaches him, he can be forgiven for this transgression. He does accept his anticipated incarceration completely, Your Honor. I sincerely predict that when Henry leaves prison, he will do everything in his power to teach young people not to ever drink, speed, and drive. I'm going to end, Your Honor, by paraphrasing a writer by the name of Jonathan Yui, who said, Forget others not just because they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. And that's the message I'd like to conclude with, Your Honor. Thank you very much to you and your staff and the court and bailiffs for all their courtesies. Thank you. Thank you. Second, 2021, we were devastated with the news that our baby girl, Tina, and her best friend Max were killed in the most tragic yet preventable way. Every parent's worst nightmare is to create a beautiful child just to give them, just, just to have them taken away at the hands of another's negligence. There are very few words to explain the feelings of losing a child. It is a pain we feel every day when, when moments pass or we anticipate her presence, just to be reminded that she will never be there. To have only the memory of what it was like to hug and embrace her, knowing we will never be able to kiss her on the forehead or tell her how much we love her and how absolutely proud of her we are. Our Tina was special to us in that she was like any other. Her perspective on the world made everyone around her better. She was the type of person who would bring in stray animals because she could not imagine leaving them in distress. When Tina got Max, he couldn't have known how much love he was going to feel and how lucky he was to have her. She only saw the beauty in life and in every soul. Tina made it her responsibility to help the community and selflessly gave anything she could to those who needed it more than she did. Every day we are reminded that her beauty has been stripped from the world and her kindness has been stopped from touching the lives of others. Every time we think of our Tina, we imagine how much better the world would be if more people embodied her spirit. Our loss has been difficult to bear. However, the loss that we have felt has been returned in blessings with, the, with more love, support, and kindness from the community that we could have ever asked for. We pray that Henry Ruggs is blessed with the opportunity to be able to watch his beautiful daughter grow into the amazing woman she can be. And we pray that this terrible accident inspires positive change in the world. 
From the bottom of our hearts, we absolutely, we absolutely love and appreciate all members of our church, Raider Nation, the city of Las Vegas community, support, and every individual who has shown up to, who has shown up to remind us that we are not alone and that Tina and Max are not alone. As her parents, we are honored to have been a part of Tina's life, to know her, to watch her go about the world, and we will forever wish our time was not cut, was not cut so short. We pray that we all take away the importance of looking out for one another, remembering everyone you meet is another human's loved one. And we pray that we can all move forward in caring for each other with consideration, compassion, and love. Thank you again, and God bless. I mean, I don't know if you could find, I mean, I'm sure you could, but this is one of the more tragic cases that I've seen. Mr. Rudd, you overcame so much as a young child, um, trauma, loss, and you worked academically and athletically so very hard. Um, and the world lost Tina, who was clearly a lovely, wonderful, and bright woman, and Max. So clearly this is a traumatic, tragic case. Mr. Rudd, you have no record, and just like others who are similarly situated, who are involved in a overly tragic situation like this, I'm going to follow the negotiations. More often than not, I follow the negotiations. If for no other reason, um, I want to be consistent because this country needs a consistent judiciary. So in accordance with the law of the state of Nevada, I hereby adjudicate you guilty of one count of driving while under the influence resulting in death and one count of vehicular manslaughter. In addition, a $25 administrative assessment fee, uh, $150 DNA fee, $3 collection fee, $60 CGA chemical and drug analysis fee. I'm going to sentence you to a minimum of 36, a maximum of 120 months on count one. Um, as far as count two is concerned, I'm going to sentence you to six months concurrent to count one. Um, two days credit, three days credit, no, I'm sorry. Good luck to you, sir. Your Honor, for purposes of the record, will the court retain jurisdiction as to the misdemeanor count to ensure that no detainer is lodged and that the felony sentence controls pursuant to the terms of the plea agreement? That's fine. I mean, I'm running them concurrent to each other, so I can't imagine that that being that is an issue, but if there is, let me know. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank All you, right. Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.